All right, hello everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, my name is Jeff Herwer. As Conan said, I'm a principal gameplay programmer at Sony Santa Monica Studios. Um, I have a bachelor's of mathematics from the University of Waterloo with a major in computer science. I graduated ooh, back in 2001. And I've been working as a programmer <clears throat> in the video game industry for over 20 years now. And as Conan said, prior to working at Sony, I worked at Electronic Arts in Vancouver. And I'm here today to talk to you about computer science and gaming. Specifically, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to what computer science is. I'll give you some example topics from computer science and explain how they apply to video game development. And finally, I'll walk you through my personal experience having navigated high school, computer science program in university and finally a career in video games which i hope will inspire you and maybe give you some pointers on how to prepare yourself to try and break into this industry if that's what you want to do uh, but first let's talk a little bit about video games um, i'm told we can do some polls so i wanted to ask a question to kick things off do you play video games with possible answers here all the time sometimes and never so let's see how this poll thing goes. There we go. Okay, we've got a lot of video game players here. That's great. I wasn't really sure if uh, the audience was an audience of gamers or more computer science people, <clears throat> but it looks like most of you uh, play video games to some degree, which is great. Okay, so when you think about video games, uh, what kind of things come to mind? Uh, you might think about uh, AAA story-driven games like God of War. Uh, the game famously created by the game studio that I work for right now. Uh, you might think about popular competitive online games like Fortnite. Or perhaps you think about uh, God of War inside of Fortnite. And yes, that is a real thing. I gotta let that dance play out before I move on. It's a thing of beauty. But there's many different uh, kinds of games out there. There's also very successful smaller scale indie games and mobile games make up a really big part of the gaming industry as well. Uh, but regardless of the kind of game, uh, the one thing all of these games have in common is that they were made by teams that included uh, programmers. And when you think about computer science and gaming, you probably think, hey, computer game programmers are really cool or someday I wanna be a video game programmer myself. So let me ask this question. <clears throat> Have you done any programming as part of your high school program? If you could enter your answer now, I'm just curious what, uh, what level of experience we have out there in the audience. Oh, we got a 50-50 split between yes and no. Interesting, that's good. So it looks like some of you have done some programming, which is great to hear. And given that you have, it may not come as a surprise to you, uh, but those who haven't done any programming, you might not know this. Uh, video game programmer is really a category made up of all kinds of different programmers. Oops. <clears throat> You've got uh, rendering programmers. Uh, they're responsible for writing the code that uh, draws everything on screen from shader programming to rasterization to uh, visual effects, all that kind of stuff falls under the category of rendering programming. You've got engine programmers. Uh, engine programming is, best way to describe it is it's, it's kind of the glue that uh, makes all the systems work together. Um, it's the kind of code that might be shared between uh, multiple games uh, and is typically much more lower level type of programming. You've got UI programmers, which uh, program all the menus and interfaces for the game. <clears throat> You've got online programmers, which are responsible for the net code and uh, uh, any online aspects of, of games for either competitive play or simple online connectivity for other reasons. You've got database programmers. There's tons of databases in video games. Uh, when you think about all the assets used to create video games from textures to models to levels to uh, text, uh, dialogue, uh, videos, all kinds of stuff. All that stuff is stored in databases, uh, in tools um, when you're developing the games. You've got tool programmers. Uh, there's tons of tools used in the background to create all the data that goes into video games. And there's teams of programmers dedicated entirely to writing those tools. And you've got gameplay programmers like myself who are responsible for the controls and the characters in the game. 
and animation programmers who are responsible for how the animations play back on the characters in the game, uh, which creates all the movement and, uh, and everything that the characters do in the game. So lots of different uh, types of programmers that make up that category of gameplay programmer. <clears throat> so let me ask one more question. Uh, this is the last question, I promise. Have you experimented with video game development on your own, on your own time? There's lots of, uh, lots of ways to get into video game programming nowadays. Uh, Unity and Unreal are both free to download and, and use for personal projects. I'm just curious how many people have done that type of experimentation on their own. All right, we've got, we've got some people who have done it, um, but most of you haven't. So it might, uh, you might not know this, but depending on the size of your teams, you would likely have, if you, if you had done some programming on your own, you would have likely acted in more than one of those roles that I just listed previously. And that's how it works in the industry as well. On smaller teams, uh, individuals end up taking up, uh, taking on multiple of these roles. Uh, you may be a graphics programmer one day and an animation programmer another day. Um, and obviously, if you're a solo programmer, you're going to have to take on all of them that apply to your project. But as the games and teams get bigger, you start to see specialization emerge. And people like myself end up focusing on uh, very specific disciplines. For me, it was gameplay and animation. Those were the areas I was most passionate about. And I slowly built up a specialty in those areas over the years. And now I'm highly specialized in those, in those areas. But it's important to know that all of these different specialties are vital to making video games. And it gives you a lot of options to choose from in terms of where you may want to contribute or uh, specialize uh, if you move into this industry. So one question you might ask is, what is the difference between computer programming and computer science? I don't know if this analogy is perfect. It's probably not perfect, but it's the best I could come up with is uh, you could think of programming uh, similar to carpentry. So it's a vital skill needed to build things and you can become a master of that skill and do some amazing things with it. And you can make a career out of it, no doubt. There's lots of very talented and skilled uh, carpenters and lots of very talented and skilled programmers. But what computer science gives you on the other hand is the knowledge and skills needed to build larger scale projects and complex systems that meet very specific needs and work together with other complex systems to achieve some larger purpose. But at its core, if I was, trying, if I was to try and come up with a one line definition of computer science, it would be that computer science is the study of data structures and algorithms. Now there's some components of computer science that do deal with hardware and, and, and different things. But to me, when I think about computer science, it's really all about data structures and algorithms. So what are data structures? Uh, data itself is just information you store on a computer. Data structures are the ways in which you can store that data. Imagine you had uh, a bunch of coins. There's many ways you could store those coins. You could just store them in a loose pile on your desk. You could store them in a jar. You could sort them and roll them up based on their uh, value in rolls, or you could keep the coins in your pocket. <clears throat> All of these are perfectly valid ways to store coins. Which one you would choose depends on many factors like how many coins you have, how much space do you have, what do you want to do with these coins and when, how often do you want to do that thing with those coins. These are all the same considerations you take when designing and writing computer programs. And computer science includes the study of all kinds of different data structures, their benefits and drawbacks, when they should be used and when they should be avoided. Here's a, a bunch of different uh, classic data structures that you'd study in computer science. Arrays, linked lists, hash maps, binary trees, directed acyclic graphs, binary space partitions. These are all classic data structures that someone who studied computer science knows intuitively and understands what types of problems each of these data structures are best used to solve. And all of these data structures, 100% of them, uh, are used heavily in video game programming. And this is just a sample. These are, 
these are the most commonly used, but uh, there's so many different types of data structures out there and you make your own as you're developing video games. But it's very important to understand these core uh, base level uh, data structures. And if you've done any uh, computer programming, you're most likely familiar with uh, some of these arrays for sure, most people would have touched. So what are algorithms? Algorithms are really just step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to best solve a given problem. Imagine you had to sort a bunch of numbers uh, from smallest to biggest. How would you go about doing it? You're not just gonna flail around aimlessly. You'd come up with some sort of strategy, either by practicing or thinking about the best way to do it, or just intuitively trying to solve the problem. But eventually you'd come up with a strategy and you'd execute on it until you got to your answer. That strategy that you come up with is an algorithm. Computer science includes the study of algorithms, algorithms that can be used in many different contexts and for many different problems. Studying these algorithms empowers the programmer whose job it is is to come up with solutions to problems every single day. One classic set of algorithms that's been studied extensively are sorting algorithms. Here's a visualization of several different sorting algorithms operating on different data sets. You can see uh, some of them sort the data very, very quickly, and some of them take a lot longer to solve, and they all act on the data in different ways. There's not always a best algorithm for a certain class of problem. There's often trade-offs to be made, and understanding all of this is extremely important when it comes to being a good programmer. You don't want to have to go back and study all the properties of these algorithms if you can understand them quickly and intuitively uh, when trying to decide how to apply them to different problem sets. Another classic category of algorithms are search algorithms. They can often be very much related to these sorting algorithms that I'm showing you here. Imagine you were trying to find the word xylophone in a novel as opposed to a dictionary. It would likely take you hours to find the word in a novel. Uh, worst case, you'd have to read through the whole book. But in a, dic in a dictionary, you could find it in under a minute, guaranteed every time. That's the power of using the correct data structure and algorithm for a given problem. And you can imagine uh, search algorithms are used heavily in video games, uh, as well as sorting algorithms. If you are trying to highlight a piece of loot or a door or an enemy in the game, you're gonna to have to search through the game to find those things. And you're gonna to wanna to do it very quickly so as not to waste all of your CPU power on the searching and save some of it for other things in the game. Here is another classic search algorithm called A star search. This is used extensively in video games as a pathfinding algorithm. And you'd study many variations of this algorithm in computer science, along with other search algorithms and uh, pathfinding algorithms as well. This particular type of search algorithm is called a greedy algorithm because it evaluates uh, its neighboring possibilities one at a time and always chooses the best one to execute next. The deeper you get into computer science, the more specialized and complex the data structures and algorithms get you start to get into very specialized fields of studies like these I've listed here, all of which are extremely relevant to video game programming. Uh, computer graphics I talked about earlier, that's how you render the images on screen from meshes and, and textures and shaders. Uh, you can also study artificial intelligence, which is a, a, a big area of study and very, very relevant to video games. You can think of all the characters in a game that aren't player controlled they are all running some sort of artificial intelligence algorithms under the hood. And you would study those in computer science as well. Machine learning is a growing field that is beginning to uh, influence every area of programming, um, but is slowly starting to make its way into video game programming as well. And of all these topics, if I, if I was in high school right now, looking to uh, continue my studies in the future, I would strongly recommend uh, doing some study of machine learning as it's starting to, to pick up. And I think it's gonna be pervasive in almost all industries, including video games. I mentioned databases earlier. There's an entire study of databases in computer science. Sof software architecture is how you put together big uh, computer programs uh, and organize them so they're efficient and easy to change and work with and build 
uh, across large teams. Real-time systems is the study of uh, writing code on embedded uh, limited hardware systems that have to run at real time uh, like video games. Animation is uh, a big area of study. Uh, lots of work there trying to synthesize animation. Uh, how do you make animations responsive to the player inputs is a very, very important to video games. And then networking also uh, for online games. All of these are uh, fields within computer science that you would study quite extensively, each one individually. And I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't quickly touch on the importance of mathematics in video game programming and in computer science. In fact, uh, computer science is in a lot of ways an offshoot of mathematics and you're using math as a way of studying these algorithms and data structures. But a lot of people in high school don't necessarily know that the importance of math. Uh, I think they hear other people who've gone through schooling saying, oh, I don't remember any of my math and I never used it after I left high school. But that's not the case if you want to get into video games. Um, everything from basic term trigonometry uh, that you'd learn in high school <clears throat> to linear algebra, including matrix multiplication and vector math are extremely important uh, in making video games. And having a nice solid foundation in mathematics is extremely important if you want to break into this industry. So I'd like to finish off my talk uh, by discussing one of my favorite topics uh, myself. Um, I told you I'd go through my journey uh, through uh, school and into the video game industry. I actually started writing my first uh, video game in grade five. So I learned how to program by buying these uh, magazines that would have uh, programs written out in the back of the magazine and you would type it out line by line on your Commodore 64, compile it and run it. And that's how I would get video games is I'd buy magazines and I'd type in the code and once I typed it all in, if I didn't make any mistakes, I'd be able to play the video game. And slowly over time, I started to learn the basics of programming and started to write some extremely simple video games. Uh, but I started that in grade five, um, mostly because my parents were really into computers and we had them lying around and I loved video games and knew that I wanted to try and make them. Uh, in high school, I took every math and computer course that I could. There weren't as many back then as I suspect there are now. And I spent a lot of my free time uh, learning and making different video games just for fun. I think over the course of my uh, high school career, I made maybe three or four games just for myself on the side, uh, but it was really, really valuable experience and got me in that headspace of developing video games um, uh, early. And I decided to go to the University of Waterloo and pursue a Bachelor of Mathematics and Computer Science, specifically because I wanted to make video games. This is what I wanted, knew I wanted to do. Um, and it was the best decision I ever made uh, join, was joining the co-op program at the university. So a co-op program is where you get to uh, do an internship with a company or a co-op placement with a company every other term. So we would do uh, four months in school and then four months at a work placement and then come back four months in school and four months at a work placement. So your degree would take longer, uh, but you had tons of practical experience um, in the workplace as you were going through your schooling. You got paid, so it helped uh, cover costs. Um, but once you get into the later years in university, at that point, you are someone that industry is starting to look at as wanting to hire. And there are tons of opportunities to get your foot in the door at various different companies at the late stages of your career there. Um, I did a couple of placements at a bank and realized that that was not for me. Um, I did not want to do that type of programming. I was doing Y2K upgrades and I found it really boring. Then I did a, a work placement at a company that contracted for the Canadian military building um, helicopter simulators so that uh, pilots could practice landing on ships. We had VR headsets and a motion platform, and uh, they had a, an old cockpit they, they put on the motion platform and they could practice landing the, the helicopter. And that was fantastic. I love that work placement. And it got me ready for uh, working at Electronic Arts, which was my last co-op placement. And I ended up working there full time immediately after graduating. I loved it so much. And then this was the final project for my computer graphics course uh, for which I won first place. Um, <clears throat> the reason I bring this up is you'll take a lot of 
if you if you pursue a degree in computer science, you take a lot of uh, courses that are somewhat related to video games or directly related to video games. And what I did when I was going through school is I would always look at those courses through the lens of video games and think, how could I use what I'm being taught in video game development? And if there was never a project where you had freedom to choose how you wanted to, uh, what you wanted to build and how you wanted to go about doing it, I would always try and bring it back to video games and reframe it in, in terms of video game development. And this is an example of that. So then I graduated, uh, worked at EA for 19, 20 years, something like that, uh, primarily working on gameplay and animation on games like FIFA, NBA, NHL, SSX, and UFC. And I've interviewed and hired many uh, co-op students uh, from computer science programs over the years. And I think all of them have made us have have ended up being hired full time after their internships and have made uh, successful careers in the video game industry. I can think back to like four or five specifically that I hired and they're all very, very successful. Uh, so this program is valued by employers um, because of the foundation that it gives you uh, in terms of understanding those data structures and algorithms. And finally, now I've recently joined uh, Sony Santa Monica, which is a dream job for me, getting the privilege to work on one of the most popular game franchises in the world in God of War. And I couldn't be happier. It's been a career that has served me very well. And I'm no joke, I have computer science to thank for it. And that is the end of my talk. I am happy to answer any questions that anyone has. I'm not sure exactly, are you asking um, what kind of coding did I do as a student? Or I'm not, I, I, I played with lots of different programmers. I played basketball with different programmers. But if you're asking what kind of programs I used, um, in high school, I used uh, C++. Actually, no, I think we started off with, uh, with basic and then I did some C programming. All of the programming I did at home in high school was done in C or C++, I can't remember. Uh, but I did most of my initial programming when I was very young uh, in Pascal, um, which I haven't used in ages. Um, but I've found as the years went on, uh, I realized it, it's important to understand the language you're working with, but once you get experience uh, with a, a programming language, um, your skills transfer very quickly to different uh, languages. And all of my programming professionally has been in C++, uh, but I have had exposure to C Sharp and Python for tools programming. Um, but you find very quickly you're dropped into a, a, a new language. And as long as you can Google um, some of the syntax and stuff, uh, most of the concepts transfer over pretty easily. Uh, so it's funny. Um, so I learned C first and then C++ and I learned it in both at home kind of on my own and through academics. And the language itself, I mean, going from C to C++ was interesting because there's uh, templates and virtual functions and you get excited about that stuff when you're first exposed to it and then slowly start using it less and less until you kind of figure out what's the right way to use this stuff? Uh, templates are good for containers. Um, virtual functions are great for interface programming, but kind of shied away from like really big object oriented programming type stuff. But over the years, C++ has changed. Um, they've added uh, new language features and I'm really lazy and I haven't really studied any of that stuff. But then I get uh, new grads coming in uh, that I start working with. And they're showing off all this like really cool uh, syntax that I've never seen before. And I'm doing code reviews for them. And that's how I'm learning uh, all the new language features of C++ is code reviews from younger programmers uh, that are joining the companies. Um, but I'd say, honestly, it hasn't changed that much. Uh, everything that I learned in uh, real-time programming of like using arrays and trying to stay away from uh, virtual functions and memory access all over the place still applies 100% today developing on uh, PlayStation hardware, trying to keep it as simple as possible, keep
keep memory as uh, contiguous as possible is still the best strategy. And uh, there's some nice niceties that have changed in the language, but not a lot. Most of it stayed stayed the same. I would say machine learning is a subset of AI. AI is a, a broad uh, category of um, many different types of algorithms that uh, try and make computers think, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Whereas machine learning is using machines to learn something that can then be applied in practice. So think of things, it, most of it is neural networks now. When you think of machine learning, you're thinking about neural networks and deep, net, deep learning. But that's machine learning also uh, encompasses a few other techniques that involve like learning from data and then applying that. And so machine learning is massive, massive amounts of data training neural networks. AI can be other things. AI can be a bunch of if statements that have uh, specialized knowledge uh, in, encoded in them. Um, and how can you learn machine learning in high school? Um, I would, I honestly, I just start Googling it. There's lots of ways of getting your foot in the door. You're going to want to learn what neural networks are. But after that, there's probably a bunch of toy programs like uh, swapping faces and stuff. Find someone who's implemented one of those, download it and run it for yourself. So train the data, retrain all the data that they've already trained in Python, uh, apply it to uh, novel data that you collect yourself. And that'll slowly get you introduced to the platforms used in this, uh, be it TensorFlow or PyTorch or whatever it is. So just try and take someone else's work and re-implement it and then move from there. See what, what interests you and uh, uh, search around for, for different, uh, different ways of trying those things out. 